Thank you for joining us at The Church Online. If you live in the Visalia area and you would like to join us at one of our weekend gatherings, The Church meets at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., 120 South Locust Street, downtown Visalia. Before we get started with today's message, here's something we want to let you know about. This fall, The Church is launching its second campus in Tulare, California. For more information, visit welcometothechurch.com slash the church at Tulare. Now let's get started with today's message. Let me ask you a question. What is it, what is it that you are, what is it that you are pursuing? What is it that you're pursuing? What is that that thing? What is it could be a thing, it could be an object, it could be a position, it could be a um, a person, um, a, a level of some sort. What is what is that thing that you are pursuing? And the next question is, is are you confident? Do you know that you know that you know that you know? That when you obtain it, when you have it, when you hold it, when you, when you finally arrive and you, you have that thing that you are pursuing, are you confident that when you get it, you'll actually have what you've been looking for? What, what is it that you're pursuing? And then are you sure that when you find it, when you obtain it, you're actually going to get the thing or things um, that you've been that you've been looking for. Today we're going to start a, a three part series, um, and today's week one. Today we're starting a three part series, just simply called the Great Pursuit. The Great Pursuit, and the the reason that we're going to talk about this is because everyone is chasing something. Everybody's chasing something. Everybody's got a dream. Everybody's got a goal. Everybody's got an aspiration. And today we're going to talk about the great, the great pursuit. And the text that we are basing this, this off of, the foundational text that we're going to kind of sit the conversation on as we go through other passages and walk through other lanes in the next few weeks, is, is, is found in John um, chapter 1, verse number 35. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God. And when the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, what do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent the day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who had heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing that Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. So what's going on in this? We'll give you a little bit of backstory because we kind of, you literally like jump we jump into the middle of this. What's going on is Jesus has been on the earth. He's getting ready to start his ministry. And before he starts his ministry, there's this other guy by the name of John, John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is calling people to repentance. He says that, that God wants you to repent. There is a God. You are sinful, and God wants you to repent. And John the baptizer is calling people to repent of their sins, to be baptized in water, and go live a new life. That's what John's teaching. Now, John has disciples that are following him. He has people that say, I want to be right with God. I want to do what's right. So, yes, I will follow you, John, and I will be baptized, and I will be the type of person who no longer strives to sin. I will repent. And John has people who in their pursuit of God are following him. And then one day as John is baptizing, he sees Jesus come. And John, Jesus walks into the water and Jesus asks John to baptize him. And John's like, no, I, I can't baptize you. You should me. But John ends up baptizing Jesus. And when John baptizes Jesus, he comes up out of the water. A dove comes and sits on his shoulder. A voice from heaven, God says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. It's this amazing moment. And then Jesus leaves. 
And John's disciples saw the whole thing. And other pe- a bunch of other people, unnamed people, saw the whole thing. Later on, it says, this is the next day. This is where we pick it up. The next day, John was there again. He's at the water again. And he's got two disciples with him. There's other people, but there's two of his disciples that are with him. And when John sees Jesus with his two disciples standing beside him, John says, look, behold, there's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the earth. And these two disciples of John say, you know what? I'm I'm following the wrong person. I need to follow him. And the Bible says that they stop what they're doing and they pursue Jesus. Jesus is just walking down the road like, hey, what's up? Man? Let's go. You, know, you guys want to go get a Mountain Dew? I mean, he's just like walking down the road. And these guys see him. They realize who he is. They stop what they're doing. And they chase Jesus down. They pursue Jesus. And they come up to Jesus and they say, hey, hey, rabbi, teacher, master, where, where are you staying? Basically, where do you live? Can we, can we hang out with you? And Jesus has a very nice, polite response. Hey, what do you want? I mean, you know, he's like, what do you want? I said, well, where are you staying? And he says, well, come. Follow me and you'll find out. And you know what they did? They followed him. And they pursued Jesus, and they walked to where Jesus was staying, and they stayed where Jesus was staying. And then the next day, they were so inspired at what they had found in Jesus that Andrew, who was one of the two, goes back and finds his brother and says, Listen, man, you got, you got to follow Jesus too. And as I was reading this, getting ready for this series, I was actually I was, I was shocked, to be honest, Whenever I you know, read through, whenever I look at the story of Jesus and the 12 disciples, I always have in my mind that Jesus picked the 12. That Jesus is in a crowd. Hey, I'll take you, Simon, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, the Levi. Come on, let's go. And that Jesus pursued the disciples, and Jesus picked his disciples. And in some instances, he did. But in this instance, these two men... Andrew, and most people think the man who's unnamed is John, the one who's writing it. Andrew and John, they chose Jesus. They pursued Jesus. They were walking a certain path. It wasn't a bad path. It's a good path. They're repenting. They're seeking God. That's okay. That's good. But when they saw who Jesus was in comparison to what they had, they said, I'm going to change what I'm pursuing, and I'm pursuing him. And they hunted Jesus down. Jesus had already came, and they decided, you're my great pursuit. You are what I'm going to hunt down. And today we're on a journey asking ourselves, what is our greatest pursuit? What is that thing that we are after? And when we find it, will we really have, will we really have what we're looking for? Today, as we look at this in this story, and over the course of the next few weeks, I'm going to try and make a case for, for, for why we should make our great pursuit Jesus. And today we're going to talk about why should we pursue Jesus. And then we're going to dive just a little bit into maybe why we don't. Why, why we're pursuing something else with more, with more tenacity than what we're pursuing Jesus. And I'm not saying you are. I'm not saying you aren't. That's just the conversation we're going today. And then we're going to pick it up next week on how do we actually pursue him. So let's start it off today. Why should we pursue Jesus? With all of the things that you could pursue, why pursue Jesus? Jesus. Now, let's be honest. There are a lot of really, and I'm not dogging the other things that we pursue. I want to understand that. There's a lot of good things that we pursue. I'm pursuing my career so that I can have fulfillment, but I can also take care of my family. That's a good thing. I'm pursuing being a good person and a moral person. That's a good thing. I'm pursuing spending quality time with my kids. I'm pursuing this vacation at the end of the year. I'm pursuing that the Colts will win the Super Bowl, and then I get it doesn't happen now because Andrew Luck 
Anyway, what is it that we're pursuing? And I'm not saying necessarily that they're necessarily bad or sinful or wrong, but with all of the things that we are pursuing and we could pursue in our life, why should we choose Jesus? And this is such an interesting thing. Jesus was there, and Andrew and John saw Jesus, but they chose Jesus. I can continue to follow John, or I can follow Jesus. Jesus did not beg them to come. This is an amazing to me. He didn't say, hey, 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 come, 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 come. He actually looked at him and said, what do you want? And it was this desire inside of them. Yes, Jesus wanted them, and yes, he had came and all that. But there was this desire inside of them that said, I want you. What do you want? I want to hang out with you. Where are you staying? Can I come with you? Why should we be like that? Why should we, in, in 2019, with all the tools and toys and bells and whistles, an amazing life, that why should we say, Jesus, I want you? Here's a few things. Number one. We should choose Jesus, number one, because he has invited us to pursue him. Do you realize that? Jesus has invited us. It says in Chronicles 61, God says, who is Jesus? God says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. God ask, seek me. Never stop seeking me. Jesus has invited us to seek him. Oh, oh, oh cool. Jesus has invited us to you know, to hang out with. Do you understand this? This would be like, I don't know, I don't know political persuasions, but this would be like, like the president of the United States saying, hey, dinner's on me, let's hang out. And even if you don't like him, it would be a great opportunity to go tell him some things you want him to fix. He's, he's asking us to hang out with him. God is asking us to hang out with him. Okay, and again, I think it's like, yeah, I'll go, no. God, let there be light. And there was light. He, 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 he forms the earth. He makes the mountains. He takes Adam and Eve and he, he creates them out of the dust of the earth and he breathes them into life. The one who holds the sun still, the one who parted the Red Sea, that guy says, hey, you want to hang out? We should pursue him because of who he is. And he actually says, what do you want? Let's hang out together. Come and follow me, and you can see where I live. That's number one, is we should pursue Jesus because Jesus has invited us to. Number two is we should pursue Jesus because he can actually be found. Jeremiah 29, 13 says this. says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Jesus is inviting us to seek him. And then secondly, unlike other things, we can actually find Jesus. When we go in, when we go all in, we can find him. He says, seek me with all of your heart and you will find me. So he's inviting us to seek him and pursue him. But then secondly, he says, when you seek for me, I'm not going to hide from you. I'm not going to run from you. I'm going to say, this is where I am. Third reason is, is when we find him, we actually get what we're looking for. When we pursue Jesus and when we find Jesus, that thing that we are looking for, when we have him, when we hold him, and he is in us, and we are in him, and we are walking with him, these things that we are looking for, we actually find in him. Scripture says in, in, in Hebrews eleven six, 6, whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists, and he rewards those who seek him. He rewards those people who make him their great pursuit. He rewards them with what? What's the reward? It says in, in the book of Psalms, the psalmist writes, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an enemy may besiege me, my heart will not fear. Through, through war, break, though war break, um, will, breaks out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord is the only thing that I seek is that I might dwell in the house of the Lord for all the days of my life. Jesus, where do you live? That's what he's saying. 
to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling and he will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon his rock. We should, we should seek Jesus and make Jesus our pursuit because, number one, he's asking us to. He's invited us to. Number two, we can actually find him. And when we find him, the psalmist says, when I'm in your presence, the one thing that I want to be is just in your presence. And I want to be in your house. And I want you to be in mine. I want to be with you because when I'm with you, I get you. I, I, I get you. And when I get you, he gives this big, long list of these things that come from being in God's presence. I get light, he says, where to go, where not to go. I get salvation. I'm set free from my old ways of thinking. He talks about being protected from his enemies, having security, even though there's people surrounding him. He says, Jesus or God, when I am with you, I get you. And because I get you, I get light. I get salvation. I get protection. I get uh, um, provision. I get all of these things that I'm looking for. What is it that we're looking for in, in a marriage? We're looking for some form of salvation. I'm lonely. I'm alone. I need someone. And now I'm with this person and they saved me from myself and my loneliness. We're looking for salvation in relationships. We're looking for protection in our career. Because if I can get enough money and enough security and enough built up, whenever this happens or that happens, I'll be fine. The things that we're looking for, security, protection, salvation, a light to know what to do, and all of those things that we're looking for over here, they're actually found in Jesus. And that's why we should pursue him. And so many times, and again, I'm not saying these other things are bad or wicked or horrible. They might be, but most of them aren't. But when we pursue them and we get them, it's like, ah, oh, really? Oh, okay. What else is there? I remember one time I, I wanted for so long to go to New York, the city of New York. Man, I want to go to New York so bad. And so finally, there's a situation that came up at this conference. We were able to go and all this stuff. So we go to New Jersey. And then while we're in New Jersey, the next day we cross over and we're hanging out in New York all day long. It's me, Veronica. Jordan was just a little guy. Logan was a little guy. Michaela was... I don't know, like maybe one or two, kind of like a family trip, and we're, we go to Wall Street, and we're hanging out, and my big thing, my big thing that I, it was, it's like a, it serves like a bucket list. Remember that movie, Bucket List? One of my bucket list items, I'm a simple man, and one of my bucket list items was, is I want to eat a hot dog from a hot dog vendor on a street corner in the city of New York. Woo, that'll be awesome. It'll just be so cool. Just walk up to this dude, and he's probably going to be, you know, rude and, you know, have ketchup and mustard on him. And he's going to say, what can I get you? And I'm going to say, give me a dog. <laughs> oh, I wanted to do that so bad. I'm going to bite into this hot dog, and it's going to be like, you know, like it's Frank Sinatra singing, New York, New York, right? It's going to be awesome. And so we go there, we're at Wall Street, there's the big bull there, and there's, here he is. There's a short little guy, and he's got the white, you know, the white apron on, it's kind of dirty, he looks like he's really in a bad mood. Woo, this is going to be it. And so I stop what I'm doing, and I go over there, and I pursue the hot dog vendor, I pursue the hot dog, he says, what can I get you? And I say, it's going just like I planned, I'll have a dog. And he gives it to me. And I pick it up, and it's smaller than what I thought it was going to be. The bun is stale. I bite into the hot dog. It's, it's kind of, it's okay. It's, it's, I don't know. It's lukewarm. And I go, well, that was a wasted $7, you know. I finish the dog and go on our way. Check it off the list. I, I did it. I ate a hot dog from a rude guy in New York City selling dogs. But once I, I mean, I'm telling you the truth. I'm driving through Pennsylvania thinking, I can't wait to eat this dog. I mean, it's going to be awesome. I was so ready. I got to get this dog. I got to get this dog. I got to get this dog. And then once I got the dog, it's like, ah, well, it's a hot dog. Okay, what are we going to eat for lunch? And so many times in our life, and I've been there and you've been there, we're, 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 we're chasing the hot dog on the corner of New York City. 
And we've got this, this epiphany in our mind that when it happens, it's going to be so amazing. And then we get there and it's like, oh, okay, cool. I want to see the Grand Canyon. Oh, that's a big hole. Okay. I want to, you want to see the Alamo? All right, check it off the list. It's a cool building. I want to get this raise. And we get it and the bills still come and it's still tight next month. It's, it's many times in this earth, in fact, all the times in this earth, the things of this earth, when we pursue them, we don't necessarily get what we were expecting. And that's, that's the point of this story in John. John the Baptist was a great man, but what John the Baptist was offering was, was not complete freedom and in the kingdom of God. It was a works-based deal. He's great and he's used by God. I'm not, there's nothing ill there about that. But it's like, okay, I can continue to live a works-based life or I can have Jesus and all that he offers. And they say, I'll choose Jesus. And they go. And in our life, we, we should do the same. We should do the same. Because he invites us to. He, when we seek him, we'll find him. And when we find him, the light and the direction, the salvation and the freedom right here, the protection from all of the stuff going all around us, and the security knowing that the very worst thing can happen to me is I'll die, which is actually the best thing that could ever happen to me. There's a security here. We should pursue him. And just real quick, I just want to dive into just super quick why... Why don't we pursue him then? Here's just a couple for today. First one is, we don't pursue him because we don't want to. I'm not, I'm not being rude. I'm not being harsh. We don't pursue him many times because we don't, we don't want to. In this story, there were a lot of people that saw John the Baptist baptize Jesus John was with his two disciples. He always has people around him. There's, there's people there when the baptism. There's people there when Jesus walks by. And out of all the people that were there, there were only two that said, where are you going, Jesus? Can I come too? There were only two that wanted to. Why didn't the others do it? It was because they didn't want to, for whatever reason. I'm busy. I'll catch you tomorrow. They didn't want to. And many times, we have God, the creator of the universe, saying, be in my presence and be my child and let me be close to you. And we're like, oh, nah, I, yeah, not today. And sometimes we don't pursue Jesus because we don't want to. I know that sounds very harsh, but it's, it's the truth. We have something else that we think will give us what we're looking for, a job, a money, a person, a sports team, a movie, a hobby. And I'm not throwing stones, just stating the truth. Many times he's there and we don't go get him because we don't want it. Second one is, is we don't really love Jesus. We love what Jesus can give us. And you see this so many times throughout the Bible. You see Judas. Judas was one of the 12 and he's following Jesus. But he's following Jesus because of what he thinks Jesus is going to give him. Jesus is going to tear down the Roman Empire. He's going to establish an earthly kingdom. We're going to pull out our daggers and we're going to cut us some Romans and it's going to be awesome. And then he's with him for three and a half years. And this guy's talking about love and peace and forgiving your neighbor and giving your enemy a two coats instead of just one. And he's like, this guy ain't going to kill anybody. He doesn't want to overthrow the Roman Empire. I'm not going to get what I want, what I want from him. And so what does he do? He, he bails. You see, Judas never really loved Jesus. Judas loved what he thought Jesus could give him. And whenever he didn't give it to him, Judas said, eh, I'll pursue 30 pieces of silver instead of you. And many times what happens in our life is, is we, 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 what we have to wrestle with is this. In the pursuit of Jesus, what if you don't get the promotion? In the pursuit of Jesus, what if the raise doesn't come? In the pursuit of Jesus, what if the healing doesn't happen like you thought it was going to? In the pursuit of Jesus, what if life does not trickle down the way you thought it was going to because you're following this magical Jesus who turns everything into rainbows and unicorns? What if the rainbows and unicorns never come? What if it's just a donkey and a bunch of clouds? That's the question. Because sometimes we don't love, we, we, we love what Jesus can give us, but we don't necessarily love him. 
the, the, the gift is not the stuff. The gift is found in him. He is light. He is salvation. He is security. He is protection. It's Jesus. It's not the other things. And there's such a big difference there. And many times we don't follow Jesus because we want the stuff more than him. And when we don't get the stuff, we pursue it someplace else. And today, I'm going to stop right there. There's two more reasons why we don't follow Jesus. But we're going to put a pin in it and bring that up next week. Because I, I think we can sit on this one. What is it that you're pursuing in life? What is it that you're pursuing? And are you convinced that when you get it, you're going to get and find the thing that you're looking for? I think that's a massive question. Because many times, unfortunately, we, we don't go all in with Jesus because we think we can find what we're looking for someplace else. And then also, many times, we start to follow Jesus but we're not following Jesus for Jesus. We're following Jesus as a means to an end. Jesus is the end. Jesus is everything. And for us, that's what we've got to wrestle with. What is our greatest pursuit? And today, I just literally want to leave you with that. What are you pursuing? Is it Jesus? Is it not? That's you for you to wrestle with. Why are you pursuing it? And why should you pursue Jesus instead? And then what are the things that have been holding you back from coming up to Jesus every day and saying, Jesus, where are you staying? What does it look like to be with you? I know it's kind of space-agey, new-agey fluff out there, but you got to wrestle with it. Do you want him? Or do you want something else? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. And God, I, I thank you that you are a good God that is so gracious with us and patient with us. You, you walked with the disciples. You walked with John. You walked with Andrew. They, saw, they sought you, but when they did, you said, come on, you'll find out where I am if you keep following me. But you didn't make them. And God, you don't make us. We, 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 don't, we don't have to really know you and be known by you if we don't want to. And that's our choice, and that's, it's not okay ultimately, but it's okay. God, I, I, I ask you to forgive me for many times in my life being duped into thinking that I'll find what I'm looking for when the room is full. And then the room is full, and it's not what I thought it was going to be. Forgive me, Lord, for being duped into thinking that whenever I pay this car off and I'm faithful with my finances, it'll be what I'm looking for and I've checked it off the list and I'm a good dad. And then we do it and it's, it's just one more thing. God, forgive me. I can't speak for others, but forgive me for sometimes, many times, wanting what you can give me more than I actually want you. Jesus, as your followers, as your disciples, as your Johns and Andrews, let us just begin to somehow wrestle with wanting you. And what does that look like? Like the great ones of old, the Apostle Paul, Peter, James, John, C.S. Lewis, J.R. Tolkien, People who just said, I, I just want to pursue Jesus and use my giftings for him. Let that, let that be our pursuit. And as we go through the next few weeks, as we really dissect this, let us be inspired to pursue you, but to pursue you together. It wasn't just Andrew going to you. It was Andrew and John. And then there was more. And then there was more. God, let you be the desire of our heart. And let us wrestle with that today. Are you or are you not? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.